millions of people have watched Bruce Yaney's viral science videos. But if you actively explore science, then you should also check out the rest of his science videos. The projects are unworldly and breathtaking on one hand, yet completely accessible and maker-friendly on the other. Trinity. It's a bird. It's that little inside. Whatever that is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Hello, my name is Bruce Yaney, and I'd like to invite you to take a look at my homemade science channel. A few of the videos, like the giant pumpkin chucking trebuchet, might be just for fun for most of us. Hello, my name is Bruce Yaney, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to make some interesting patterns using light and sound. But the majority leave you with enough information that you could roll up your sleeves and make them yourself, often for just pennies. Now the devices I want to show you today are fairly simple and they're easy to make. And Mr. Yaney seizes the teaching moments that reveal deep secrets of the universe. And then I took a piece of black plastic trash bag and stretched it tight over the top of it. I can actually feel the surface vibrating, but now I want to try and see it. They're interactive demonstrations that his students can predict, observe, and calculate results. Not secure. <laughs> In fact, his students are often out of their seats and figuring things out with their hands as well as their minds. It's pretty much the same as what we see on a standard color wheel. Even when presenting age-old demonstrations, Bruce always adds something new. Magdeburg hemispheres have been around for centuries, but instead of always using a vacuum pump, he'll also evacuate the air using simple hydrostatic pressure, a tube of water slung over the balcony, creating an even more fascinating insight into air pressure. So Simon, you and I. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Why? Here, oh, I'll do it again. Come on, let's do it Who knew that Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion could be so beautiful? If you tap on the string, waves will move away from the device. So what's causing them to move to get this drawing? Or that it would be so much fun to use science to figure out things that look like magic. Now what I want to do is I'm going to unscrew that bulb, push down on the button again, and hey, there's the bulb again. I've linked a sampling of my favorite Bruce Yaney videos in the video description. Don't forget that you're not actually subscribed to any YouTube channel unless you ring the bell. And pop guns! It's time to go collect some data. What's a science teacher to do to make power and energy calculations interesting to middle school students? Bruce has his students predict... My prediction was 0.7. Oh my gosh, look at that. My prediction is uh, it's 0. Weigh. Of course, measure. Time. And calculate their joules, newtons, horsepower, and watts. Thank heaven for the teachers who make the effort to keep their students engaged while shepherding them to proficiency. By and by, someone wrote me. You know, Mr. Yaney lives and teaches in Pennsylvania just like you. So here I am, right at the end of the school year, visiting his school in a beautiful patch of rural Pennsylvania. How do you begin to describe Mr. Yaney's classroom and lab? Is it like a hands-on science museum? Yeah. Is it like an enchanted castle with magic seeping out of every wall? Yes to that too. I'm here with my daughter and Eric Herman from Cornell Synchrotron Lab for the day. 
we're going to show Bruce's 8th grade students how to fly walk-along gliders and explain a bit of the science that keeps them levitated. After school, I wanted to know more about what makes this super science teacher tick. I met Mary, his wife, and business partner. Stick around for the interview and you'll see what the business is, what influenced him to become a great inventor teacher, how a sailboat figured into his first teaching job, and so much more wisdom distilled from an amazing life. One of my assignments for class, we have the kids making musical instruments and we've had a number of flutes, but one of my favorite toys has been the slide whistle. Uh, and I've had a number of them that I've purchased myself, but I thought it'd be more fun to make my own. So, I've been playing around with different designs. I have PVC ones. I have, actually this is nice, I like this because it's clear PVC. I also thought it'd be fun to try and make some out of bamboo. So there are some locally grown bamboo and I cut a few pieces down and right now I don't have the plunger for it, but it has a nice tone to it. So I became interested in science uh, as far back as I can remember, just when I was very, very young. We were constantly taking things apart. I mean, playing with little toy motors. We had little battery-powered uh, toys that would always break down. And at that point, it was always more fun actually taking them apart and seeing what you could build with those motors than probably what the device did originally. So I, I just think that was probably my start. I, you know, the, the strange thing is I, I, I was interested in science simply because I was always fascinated by how things worked. I didn't really have teachers that uh, I think helped me along. We had a program of science where we would simply read out of books and then uh, copy notes off of a boards and then a few weeks later we'd have a test and, and that would be our science. I don't remember ever doing experiments where we actually got our hands involved on something. So. I, I really enjoyed science, but it was always things that I did on my own, I think. Uh, we had chemistry sets at home. I would play with the chemistry sets. I was mixing things together, probably doing some things that I shouldn't have, uh, some flammable, flammable uh, materials that uh, I like to uh, see what happens when they would, you would put a match to them, and sometimes it, would, it uh, got a little dangerous at times. In fact, it, it was kind of scary if I think back on it, but... Uh, I got through it okay, and, and uh, I think it, it always piqued my interest about how things, how, how things are involved and how they, how they work together. Back in the day, there were quite a few chemicals that you could purchase very easily that simply weren't available now, or sim simply aren't available nowadays. I mean, the uh, pharmacy down the street sold us mercury. You could, you could buy some of them, you'd put it in your hand and roll it around and, and do all sorts of things with it. And, uh, we, I think we had potassium the one time and, and, uh, I mean, they sold it in little packets of oil so that, that, uh, it was okay until you took it and threw it in water and you'd have this nice big, you know, ex it'll be a little explosion and, and smoke and, and so forth. Uh, my father's friend used to load his own shells for shooting and, and, uh, so we had, some gunpowder and, and we uh, occasionally we would put some in a little packet and, and have a fuse to it and then have a nice big explosion. Except the one time we ran out of fuses and my friends, it was my friend's turn to light it and he decided to use a sparkler. And so he had the sparkler sitting in a glass container and, and uh, lit the sparkler and the spark went down into the gunpowder and as he was running away it went off and so he had glass shrapnel up and down his, up and down his back. So that, uh, that was really a, a turning point as far as safety. I never really thought of uh, how vulnerable we were. But, uh, I mean, it's, easy. it's very easy to get in trouble uh, when you don't know what you're doing or, or when you're just not paying attention to uh, details. <laughs> they, put, they actually put up a lot with a lot when I was growing up. Uh, I was always building things and tearing things apart. And uh, my father in particular... Uh, was a uh, loving soul. He uh, 
He let me borrow his, I mean, I would borrow his tools and I had a hard time putting them away. Uh, so he was always looking for his tools. And sometimes he got a little upset with me. In fact, at the one point, he ended up putting a, uh, a door on his workshop so that I couldn't get in it. But uh, he hid the key in a very accessible point and it didn't take me too long to find the key. So I was then getting the tools out. Uh, I would sneak in, I would open the door, I would sneak in, get the tools out, use them, and then put them back into the shop again uh, without him knowing about it. But then I confronted him about, well, I didn't confront him. I, I shared with him that I knew where his key was about 20 years later uh, when we were talking. And I said, yeah, he knew that I was doing that, but he was teaching me a little bit of responsibility uh, and, you know, because I was getting the tools back to where they belonged. So that lasted a little while, and then he ended up taking the door off, and, and we, were, we were good to go. Um, but yeah, it was always a matter of, of uh, they allowed me to, they gave me uh, quite a bit of, of uh, latitude as far as what they allowed me to do. And, and I mean, when I, was, when I was in junior high school, we were building go-karts and mini bikes and playing with uh, gas-powered engines and, and I mean, if you treat those things wrong you can get in a lot of tr trouble really quick but uh, for me it was a it was a really good learning experience I learned you know how to take engines apart how to you know tune up engines uh, put them together I learned uh, some basic machines you know how machines work and, and mechanical advantage didn't really understand the concept but you know play around and, and find something that worked and and it, it uh, I didn't realize I was learning science at the time but I mean that's what it was it was uh, mechanical advantage uh, so my my family was really good about uh, I mean it was a good place to grow up and uh, it wasn't a real science it wasn't a real I mean it wasn't a scientific family but uh, but it, it uh, it was an environment that allowed me to follow my interests. And so I think that would really made a big difference. It, when I was growing up, we did watch, we watched Mr. Wizard some. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't run to the television whenever that was on though. That was, if I got to see it, that was fine. If not, uh, I didn't. Um, I, 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 I I just enjoyed working with my hands. I, I enjoyed seeing how things operated, and, and I think that was my driving force. Not there the was not a guiding person early on that that pushed me towards science. I think it was a lot of it was just simply because I had an interest in it. Uh, so yeah, I, we did watch some of Mr. Wizard. Uh, there were some other people that uh, I think it was ten or fifteen years into my teaching career that I finally discovered. Uh, Joy Sumner Miller, who which I, I, I've, <laughs> I loved his his short programs, and and what was great about them is that they weren't polished. He would do an experiment, and it would fail miserably. And he said, "Yeah, well, that's part of science. It doesn't always succeed, and we haven't met the the criteria for success. And so this is what happens. And so it's kind of interesting watching other programs where they have everything go exactly right, and yet his would be." You know, his would be would, was such good programs because they didn't always go right, but then he would explain why they did. So I, I really enjoyed Julius Sumner Miller. As I said before, in, in my high school, there was really not a strong science program at that time. It was, I had an interest in science in spite of, in spite of what the current offerings were instead of in, because of it. Uh, but I did have an interest in, in electronics and, and in graduating high school, I decided to do, enroll into an electronic college uh, in Philadelphia. And <clears throat> that, was, uh, that was interesting. It, it was, uh, it learned a lot about circuits and electricity, but I, that wasn't really, you know, after a couple of semesters, that I realized that really wasn't what I wanted to do with my life, that I enjoyed working with people and so at that point, I transferred to a, a, a community college. And actually, it was kind of funny. I, I ended up going to a community college and took courses at Temple University at the same time. So I was actually in, enrolled in two colleges at once for a semester. Uh, but I, I decided that I wanted to give t 
teaching a try. My mother was actually a teacher, and uh, I always respect. I had a lot of respect for my mother in in her yeah in her profession as a teacher. And so it, it kind of surprised my parents, I think, that I wanted to go into teaching. But uh, they, they, you know, I explained it to them that I wanted to give this a try, and, and uh, so I I took some education courses and. I really enjoyed it. I, I thought that, uh, you yeah, know, this seems like a good profession and I've, if I could go back and do it again, it would be my same, I mean, it would be the same choice. Uh, it's kind of funny, I, I, I took a lot of biology courses and I really wasn't that strong in, in the physical sciences. In fact, I had expected to probably get a job in biology and, and uh, when I finally Graduated and and uh, I was working in a summer camp that after the year after graduation, the summer after graduation I was working in a in a uh, summer camp and I got a phone call from uh, Bloomsburg saying that there was a school that was interested in a middle school teacher. Uh, would I be interested in going down and take and giving an interview? And so yeah, I thought that would be a good idea. So I drove down to Anvil and it was a very rural community and I thought well this is a little bit a little bit more rural than what I wanted and I they I got there and and really had a good interview with them and and decided uh, okay if they are interested I would be you know this seems like a good place I'll I'll give it a try for a couple of years and if I'm not happy I'll move on but I've I've loved working in this community it's it's been a uh, it's been a wonderful life here As I was growing up, I always enjoyed building things. Uh, and then one of my first really major projects was a, I guess when I was a junior in college, uh, I had an interest in sailing. Now I knew nothing about it. I had been on a boat once in my life, but I just thought it was the neatest thing. So I sent away for uh, some designs to build a boat. And I got the, I got the designs and, and I looked at them and, and it just, I was not satisfied with, all, with them at all. So I decided to end up building my own. Uh, there was a, uh, it, was, it was kind of interesting, there was a house up the, the road where they had parked a, a catamaran. And I just thought that was the coolest boat ever. So I decided I'm going to build myself a catamaran. So I'd go up and I'd look at this thing and then I, I uh, got together some, some some scraps of wood and, and uh, purchased some of these big long pieces of styrofoam and I shaped the styrofoam so that they, they resembled the, uh, the holes of this catamaran and, and a friend of mine worked in a, an auto body store so he got me some, some fiberglass and so I ended up fiberglassing the, the holes and, and got some piping, somebody gave me some piping for it and I made the, the framing for it out of piping that was you know junk from somebody else's scrap yard and uh, so I ended up building this uh, catamaran, and, and I, I was kind of leery about putting it in the water. I had no idea whether it was going to work. I had, I had no idea what I was doing. But we put it in the water, and, and the darn thing, this, it actually worked. And it actually worked fairly well. And the funny thing was, I had pictures of it. When I went to do my interview at the, the high school for, this, for my first job, the principal that was the middle school principal was was in, really interested in sailing also. So it must have been a two hour interview and I, I bet we spent an hour, an hour and 50 minutes talking about sailing and the rest of the time was simply about what do you think about this type of education or, or what are your views on uh, on student progress and so forth and, and the rest of the time was simply talk, talking about sailing and, and, and so forth. So that actually got me my first. That actually got me my first job, and I, I thought that was always amusing that uh, it got me there. My job was uh, they hired me as an eighth grade teacher, and and uh, in biology. It, or no, actually, it was a uh, it was uh, a program called ISCS, which was a self paced. Uh, it was more of a physical science course than biology. Uh, I, I, did, I ran that program about two years and I just was very unhappy with, with the progress that I saw. So I started, we were doing some self-paced, but then I'd start giving some of my own lessons and, and eventually I, I did less and less of the, the ISCS program and, and moved into my own, a program of my own design. 
They had some excellent, they had some excellent uh, experiments there, but I, I just thought the kids were missing uh, the points that it was trying to make. It, was, it would take six weeks to get to a point that they should have gotten in three days. So I thought I was doing better with my own design than, than, than using this canned program. Now, the funny thing was the, uh, the school at that time, I mean, they just, it's a, it's a rural school, very little budget. I think my first budget was $150, $200. And there were th some things that I wanted to show my students, but either the, the material was too expensive or it just didn't show exactly what I wanted to. So I started, I just started building, uh, you know, I, I went to a lot of museums and, and saw some really neat demonstrations and, and started thinking, now how can I do that in my own classroom? So, I mean, that actually got me started in building things for my classroom was the desire to get kids' hands on things, let them see how things work. And, of course, I had to make them myself because it's simply, we simply didn't have the money. It's funny, I, I still have some pictures. I still have some of the pieces, some of my original pieces that I built you know, 37, 38 years ago. It worked well for me, so I ended up, you know, I, I enjoyed going to museums and... and I just it continued with that process, and I think the more the more I did that, I think the better I got at it. I could. It was funny. I could walk into a, a hardware store and see. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, I need that piece, and I need that piece, and if I put those together, it's going to do the same thing as this uh, this device that I'd spend one hundred and fifty dollars in a uh, supply catalog on. Uh, a certain a turning point, I guess it was about 1990, 89, 1990, uh, there was a uh, science company that used to send around representatives to the, the, they'd come into your school and they'd talk to the science teachers trying to get them interested in your, in their uh, materials, in their catalog. So at this time, they, so the one year this, this sales rep came to the building and, and the end of the school day, he came down to my room and, and, uh, I had some, some of my stuff out. He talked to me about their science kits for a couple moments, and then he just got sidetracked, and he started playing with some of the stuff out of my room, and he said, yeah, this, you got some great stuff here. You know, where'd you get it? I said, well, I built it. So he said, do you sell these things or anything? You should, you should really look at trying to, to produce these things. And I said, no, I really haven't, hadn't given that a thought. He said, well, you know, I, I think our company would be interested in buying these things. So I ended up sending them a, a video with about 15 ideas on it that I thought other teachers would be interested in and they could sell in their catalogs. Well, they, they really liked them, so they uh, ended up buying the rights to seven ideas that first year, and uh, they put them in their catalogs, and they, they really had a good response to it. Uh, so the next year, I think they put maybe eight more pieces in their catalog, and the, the response from other teachers was so good that they ended up developing a whole program around teacher-developed science pieces. So they were, I mean, they, they had calls out to, to teachers to send them ideas, and, and uh, so, I mean, they really, they did well with, with the, what they call it, classroom, teacher-developed classroom-tested ideas, and they did very well with that. It was fun dealing with the company. We They'd end up taking me around to, uh, uh, they took me to various, conferences, state, national conferences, and I did, we had a great time. We were doing all these presentations for them, and we were getting these huge, I mean, we were getting 200, 200 people, we get 200 people in these uh, workshops, uh, you know, where the room would be set up for maybe 50 or 60 people, and then we'd have people standing all the way around the entire room, two or three deep, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, and so that was, I mean, that was really a, 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 uh, a, a push the desire to, to do even better at it, to make the product, products as good as I can and try and make them accessible. And that lasted for a number of years. Uh, that what time range was this? What year? This was, uh, the, I started doing conferences for them probably about 1994, 95. Mm -hmm. And that lasted into about 2000. I mean, that was into... 2000, maybe 2003, 2004, somewhere around there. Uh, they then sold their company to a, their company got bought out by another company and they had a lot of changes and one of them was they dropped, uh, it, I guess money had gotten tighter, so they dropped going to, or they dropped, 
the idea of, of bringing teachers in to do workshops for them, and, and they wanted their own staff to do them instead, uh, which was a shame because it was, it was, it was actually kind of funny. The, going to their workshops then, when we were drawing 100, 100 people, 150 people, 200 people for a workshop, uh, their own people were only drawing you know, 20 people, 30 people you know, on, on a good day. Uh, so I think we generated a lot of goodwill for them that they never quite understood. Um, but even after I got out of that, it's just, you know, it, I just, the more pieces of equipment I got at it, I think the, the more pieces I started building, I think the better I got at problem solving. It was just, uh, yeah, I, I'd find an idea that I wanted to, to show. And it was, it had nothing to do with, with whether it went in the catalog and I was just, yeah, I, I, I still like doing that. I still like, I, yeah, I still like doing that now. I like, I like building things and seeing how the thing operates. Uh, it just, it still amazes me how, how nature works. Uh, but I got very good at, at, uh, looking at an idea and then figuring out what components I could use to build it. And... Uh, also, I mean, another important thing was building building it simple enough that other people could build it also. So, I mean, if you look at all the pieces, of, or most all the pieces I have, uh, they are, I mean, it, some of them require a little bit of woodworking skill, but there's nothing extremely complicated. You're not doing welding, you're not doing metal fabrication, it, you know, all, almost all the pieces are made out of wood or plastic or something. And uh, I, I think that's been a real, a real plus for me. Uh, I think that's probably why there's, there's been some interest in it. It's because they are reproducible. I actually got into the video because uh, this is my 40th year teaching. And uh, most, most teachers retired at 35 years. And, and I decided I wasn't quite done yet, so I go a, a year or two longer and then I go another year and, and I'm still here so uh, but I'm, the writing's on the wall I, sooner or later I do have to retire uh, but I, I thought I had a lot of good ideas and I wanted to uh, my, my reason for going on YouTube were actually several fold one of the things was that I wanted to share them with the person that follows me I'm, I'm going to leave a lot of my equipment behind and I would like them to know how to use it uh, so I'm, I'm hoping the videos would help them in, in whatever program they do, and it, who knows, they may end up going in a completely another direction, and that's fine also, but that's the decision, you know, they need to make. Uh, for a number of years, I've, you know, for a number of years, actually from like 1992 on, I've been, I've been doing workshops for other teachers. Uh, so another factor was that uh, uh, I, I, when I do a workshop, I, I, I take as many pieces of equipment that'll fit into the car as possible. And then when I do a workshop, I will just simply do one experiment after another and, and give a quick explanation of what they're seeing. Because I always, always found when I went to a workshop or when I was, when I, yeah, when I was going to a workshop, uh, if I got one or two ideas out of it, I'd be happy. Uh, and so if somebody, if I went to a workshop that only, you know, somebody went on and on about one idea, then, and I, I didn't like that idea, then I, I was not happy. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to throw a lot of ideas out there. And if somebody's really interested, they will pursue it. And, and you know, you know it, it's a, it, planting the seed is what I was trying to do. Uh, but in a lot of cases, I would, I would get emails back or, or uh, calls back to, to the school or, or to, you know, some cases, I guess I gave out my home address. So I get these, these questions asking me, you know, we saw this, but we didn't remember how you did it. Uh, uh, or, you know, how did you make this? So I thought, you know, he, this would be a good way of, of sharing some of the things that I wasn't able to show at the, work, at, at the workshops or give people a, a, you know, a visual reminder of, of what, what I showed them. So I thought that, was, that, was, that would be a good addition to to the workshops themselves. Uh, and then I, I, I also just wanted to share it with other people. I, I, thought, I thought I had some good ideas and, and you know, they, they were interesting to me. There, surely there are some other people out there that would find them interesting also. So now yeah, throw them out there and see what happens. 
I, <laughs> I'm not the most technic technologically advanced person. I, I struggle with the technology, but uh, I got a cheap point and shoot camera and I started shooting and, and you know, I, I look back at some of the earliest ones and I'm almost embarrassed to go back and, and view those actually. Cause I I'm think everybody not, has one. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But yeah, there's actually some of them I'd like to go back and redo because mm -hmm. I'm just not happy with what they came out. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a learning experience. It's been fun. Right. Uh, How did you learn to edit? Well, that's that was trial and error. In fact, really? I you didn't I, take a class. Or I didn't take any class. I I, okay. I mean we used Mac computers and and I used iMovie. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is that I'm I'm now struggling with my computer because I like the current version of the iMovie, right. and if I upgrade my my computer, then I then I have to switch to another iMovie version, and and I've seen the later versions, and I'm not happy with what I've seen there, so. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer this the this computer and the f versions are going to last, but uh, I'm going to keep it as long. I'm going to keep it the same as long as possible. But I did tell you about my my getting started with with the products that were sold into a catalog, and uh, I would I would uh, develop a certain number of pieces and then show them to them, and the one piece that I developed uh, was a little connection that joined two soda bottles together and there would be a straw that went from the bottom from the connector into the bottom bottle and from the connector into the top bottle and I would put water in the bottle and then I would turn it over and it would make a little fountain and it was it was kind of a neat piece and I showed it to this company and they said yeah we, we like this but it's just not something that we can produce so I, I played around with it some more and, and uh, at that time there was a product called tornado tube and so I found that I could take a tornado tube and I could adapt that, I could knock out the centerpiece and put a little, a little piece of, a little cylinder inside and I would drill it out and then add the two straws and I could make my own little fountain. So I, I liked this piece and I thought it would be a good toy. So we started making some of these pieces and I sent them to various museums and so forth, had homemade packaging, it was, it looked, when I look back it was just terrible. But we found a couple people, couple stores and, and uh, museums that liked it and uh, that actually uh, got us going and so I started taking these tornado tubes and, and, and building these pieces and I made all these jigs that would make the process faster so I could actually do the whole process for each, for, for each piece I was putting about, uh, it was only about 30 seconds into each piece and I thought that was pretty good uh, and we started getting orders for it and we made up a, a much nicer package and we'd send them out. So we sold about 10 or 15,000 of them that way and we just, while it was quick and easy for me to make, I was just running out of, you know, I didn't, I had, I had small children at the time, I was teaching full time. So at that point we started looking around and we found a, a mold maker. And so we decided to uh, use our life savings and, and uh, I mean, it was expensive to get a, to get the, the cast the, the, the mold made for this thing and so we we you know, used most of our savings and, and decided to go into try a business 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 venture and, and like how uh, expensive was it I'm just curious uh, it was probably about 50, I mean this was 25 years ago and it was yeah. probably about fifteen thousand dollars and at that time it was actually That's a lot of more money. than that um, yeah. uh, at that time it was probably about like 28 years ago wow. at this point and it was yeah, it, was a, it wasn't just that, it was also, it was a joke. we had to not only get the mold made, but we'd also um, have to buy you know, 20,000 or 50,000 bags to put it in and, and the other materials to go with it. And I was also, um, the initial order was for, I don't know, 10,000 of the connectors or so forth. So it, it was a big step for us to spend the, the money to try this. But it... We saw potential there and, and uh, decided to, to go for it, and it, it's worked well for us. Uh, so my wife and I both ran the business together, and, and it just got to be too much for me. So she was, she was actually working a part-time job somewhere else, and she decided to quit that job and, and just do the business full-time. And then uh, a couple years later, we then uh, looked at putting other pieces in, into the uh, business, and so we had this little toy motor, a buildable motor, the world's simplest motor. So we ended up getting a mold made for that. And that's actually 
done better for us than the original fountain connection has done. So my wife now runs that business. She is the president. She's the uh, treasurer. She is the uh, operations officer. She does everything, and I'm just kind of her gopher for it. <laughs> I'm the muscle. I, when she ever needs something lifted, I end up lifting the heavy stuff, and, and she gets all the... She does everything else for the business. Of the camera, we can see the trail of the cup moving upward and also that it's spinning at the same time. Two, three. Two, three, go! Let it go! Now, part of the assignment is they have to be able to tell me what that note is. They have to be able to tell me its frequency and then also calculate its wavelength. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Can I start first? Yeah, start. <laughs> Thank you.